So last week we covered the best structures for foreigners to use to invest in U.S. real estate. This week we're going to cover the worst structures for foreigners to invest in U.S. real estate. And you know what's funny about this? Well, ironic is maybe a better word, is most people invest using the worst structures for foreigners to invest in U.S. real estate. I don't know why this anomaly happens, but so many intelligent, smart business people I know, if they're investing in real estate in any other country besides the U.S., whether it be in here in the UAE or in some European country, they carefully plan it out. They go talk to a lawyer. They talk to a tax advisor in the country where they're going to invest. They talk to a tax advisor in their home country to find out how their home country is going to treat this investment. But for some reason, people investing in the U.S. just go for it without getting any advice and it usually bites them in the ass. So in this video, we're going to cover the worst structures for foreigners to invest in the U.S. and hopefully help avoid using these structures because there's much better structures and I went through them last week, as I said in our video, best structures for foreigners to invest in U.S. real estate. Let's get started. By far, the worst way for a foreign non-resident alien individual to invest in U.S. real estate is as an individual. I know they think it has its advantages. It's simple. It's cost effective. There's no corporate formalities like board meetings or meeting minutes or resolutions you have to do. There's basically no administration. There's nothing to set up. There's no separate tax return. There's no separate entity level tax like a corporate tax. And you get the advantage of the reduced 20% long-term capital gains tax rate as long as the property is owned for over a year. But in my opinion, the disadvantages of individual ownership so far outweigh the advantages that it just should not be an option. So first of all, the non-resident alien individual investor is going to have to file a U.S. income tax return to report any income associated with the U.S. real estate that they own. Now to do that, that requires them to get a U.S. tax ID number and interact with the IRS, which is never really a good idea. If you can avoid interacting with the IRS individually, it's better in my opinion. Also, they're going to be subject to gift tax. So if they want to gift that property to a spouse or to children or anybody, there's going to be a gift tax up to 40% on the gift of that U.S. real estate. Additionally, they're going to be liable for U.S. estate tax. A lot of foreigners don't realize that if you own U.S. real estate, you're liable for U.S. estate tax at up to a tax rate of 40% on the fair market value of the foreign real estate minus a $60,000 exclusion. So let's say, for example, you own a piece of real estate that's worth $2 million. You die, you get a $60,000 exclusion, and $1.94 million is going to be subject to 40% estate tax. That means your heirs are going to get about half of the value of your U.S. real estate. Not a great outcome. You don't get any privacy because you invested in your own name. You have unlimited liability. You have no asset protection. So let's say it's a rental property and the tenant sues you. All your assets worldwide are at risk. You have no separation of ownership and management. So basically the owner has to manage it, not like a corporation or an LLC where you can appoint directors or managers to deal with it. And there's no probate protection, right? So if you die owning it, in order for that property to be passed to your heirs, it's going to have to go through a probate process that often takes more than a year and costs 10 to 12 percent of the value of the estate. So this is why I think that the disadvantages of individual ownership far outweigh the advantages. So let's talk about the next worst structure, which is a partnership. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. Now the advantages of a partnership are you get privacy protection because you can name the partnership something other than your name. You can take advantage of the long-term capital gains tax rate because there's no entity level tax to partnerships. It's a flow through entity, right? So all the income flows through to the partners who pay tax on it and they would get the advantage of long-term capital gains tax rate assuming that holding period of a year is met and they could use the property personally without having to pay rent. But again, the disadvantages in my opinion so far outweigh the advantages. Again, the partners are going to have to file an income tax return in the U.S. That means getting a tax ID number, interacting with the IRS. There's a separate tax return filed 
by the partnership form 1065. Again, there's no entity level tax, but you have to file that return to report the partnership's income and then how it was distributed amongst the partners. There's no gift or estate tax protection because the partnership interest would be subject to US gift or estate tax. See, there is actually privacy. You have unlimited liability in a partnership because all partners are liable for everything that the partnership is liable for. You have administrative complexities. You need to have a partnership agreement. You have to operate the partnership in accordance with that agreement. And again, you have no probate protection. So if you die owning that partnership interest, you're going to have to get it to, into court and go through the probate process to have that passed to your heirs. So again, partnership, I don't think is generally a good idea. Now, if you watched my video last week on the best structures for foreigners to invest in US real estate, you will have seen a structure that is a foreign corporation owning a US corporation. So a lot of foreign investors in US go, what do I need the foreign corporation for? Can't I just set up a US corporation and get the same advantages? No, it absolutely does not work. So the advantages of using just a US corporation owned directly by a non-resident alien individual is that you do get FERPTA protection, so there's no FERPTA withholding. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that FERPTA withholding is basically a 15% withholding tax that needs to be paid when a foreigner sells a property in the United States. So let's say, for example, the property is being sold for 500,000, the buyer would need to withhold 15% or $75,000 and pay that over to the IRS. 425,000 would go to the foreign seller. When the foreign seller then filed the US income tax return, if 75,000 that was withheld is more than the actual tax due, they will get a refund for the difference. If 75,000 was less than the actual tax due, then they're gonna owe the IRS some additional money. You also get some privacy protection and asset protection, and you get to take advantage of the 21% corporate income tax rate. The disadvantages, however, of it owning a US corporation directly as a non-resident alien individual that owns US real estate is you have no gift or estate tax protection. So basically, if you gift shares in that US corporation, it's gonna be subject to gift tax. If you die owning those US shares, the fair market value of those shares are gonna be subject to US estate tax, less that $60,000 exclusion. Dividends are gonna be subject to withholding tax. The default rate is 30%, although that can be reduced by an applicable tax treaty, sometimes down to zero depending on in which country the foreign shareholder lives and what the tax treaty says. There's gonna be a requirement to file a separate tax return, a corporate income tax return. There's gonna be an entity level tax. And then there's also gonna be this withholding tax when a dividend is paid out, so you really get double taxation. If you wanna use the property personally, you're gonna to have to pay for market rent or you risk the IRS imputing that rent and assessing interest and penalties. You're gonna have corporate formalities to contend with. So you need to hold meetings. You need to have minutes of those meetings, pass resolutions, all that fun stuff. And there's no probate protection on the ownership of those shares. So basically it's gonna to have to go through the probate process that I discussed earlier. Now, probably the most common entity that four non-resident alien individuals set up in the US to invest in US real estate is a limited liability company that they own directly. Bad idea. So. First of all, if a US limited liability company has one owner, it's considered a disregarded entity for US income tax purposes, and the foreign owner will be taxed exactly the same as an individual would. So you can go back and take a look at the individual ownership section of this video, and that's how an LLC with one owner would be taxed. If it's an LLC with multiple owners, it's gonna be taxed as a partnership. You can look at that section of this video, and you'll see how an LLC with multiple owners would be taxed by default as a partnership. And if it elected to be taxed as a corporation, then the US, in, the US corporation income tax would apply and the advantages and disadvantages as discussed in the US corporation section of this video so you can watch that. I only advise using US LLCs to what we call silo risk, so in conjunction with another entity. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we use the structure, we have a foreign corporation, that owns a US corporation, and that US corporation owns four rental properties. It's not a great setup. You get all the advantages of the foreign corporation, US corporation structure, as discussed in my video, best structures for foreigners to invest in US real estate. But the problem is you have a liability issue, right? You have the US corporation, which owns four rental properties. So if there's liability that arises as to one of those properties, who's gonna get sued? 
the U.S. corporation. And all of its assets are going to be at risk because it owns all of these rental properties. Well, what we can do is we can have that corporation set up four LLCs, put each rental property in a separate LLC. Now what happens? If liability arises as to one of those properties, the LLC that owns it is going to be sued and only its assets at risk. The corporation's assets and the assets of the other LLCs are going to be completely protected. So LLCs are great if used in conjunction with one of the structures discussed in my best structures for foreigners to invest in US real estate video. The link is down in the description if you want to check out what the best structures are, but I generally do not recommend an LLC as a standalone entity. I also don't generally recommend using a grantor trust for ownership of US real estate by a non-resident alien individual. Now, the reason being is because a grantor trust is disregarded for US income tax purposes. So it's generally like being treated as you owned it individually. So if, you're if you want to know what that looks like, just check out the individual section of this video. The only advantages that you get is you're going to have some privacy protection because you can name the trust something other than your name. You get probate protection because it's in a trust. But the disadvantages, just like with individual ownership, are the non-resident alien grantor is going to be required to file a U.S. income tax return, interact with the IRS, get a tax ID number, all that good stuff. There's going to be no gift or estate tax protection, no FERPTA protection, unlimited liability. Uh, there is actually separation of ownership and management. So I'm sure some of you are thinking at this point, oh my God, I own U.S. real estate through one of the structures that shows up in this video of the worst structures to use when foreigners invest in U.S. real estate. Don't worry, there are ways to restructure it, but we need to be very careful because a restructuring can have tax consequences. For example, you could it would be possible to trigger a capital gain on any appreciation when you transfer this into a company or a certain type of trust. There could be FERPTA withholding on the transfer because that is oftentimes treated as a disposition, although there are exceptions to that. There could also be a gift tax if, for example, we're putting it into a trust. Now, there are options to avoid all of these, all of the above in most circumstances, but certainly not all. So we need to take a look at your unique situation to see what your restructuring options are. We're happy to do that. We have a lot of experience doing that. We've been helping people structure and restructure the U.S. real estate investments for two decades. We're experts at implementing the right structure for our clients' unique situation. If you need help, give us a call or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com or reach us on the web at www.esquiregroup.com. Thank you.